Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another McFarlane Toys news update. Today was Saturday for NYCC 2024, of which we all took to the River Pavilion. The pavilions of the Javits Center. My God, as confusing as they are. More on that in just a few. But just in case you have been living under a rock the last couple days, well... I have teamed up with Entertainment Earth for this entire weekend, and together, yeah, get ready for this, we are going to be giving away a $250 gift card courtesy of Entertainment Earth. So, all you have to do to enter, I'll make it really simple on you, just comment below what was your favorite reveal from all of New York Comic Con thus far. There is no right or wrong answer, however, it won't get you an extra entry by any means but hey you know maybe you should subscribe and hit the bell and do the like thing and all that kind of stuff i would greatly appreciate it but it's you're not obligated we're not going to put no pressure on you but enter the contest give the old win c hopefully you walk out with a 250 and fifty dollar gift card but in this whole situation okay when I go to San Diego Comic-Con, or really any other convention I've ever been to, when they have panels, what usually happens here, right? You sit in a room, it's a closed room, you got doors to this room, there are no windows, but you usually have a stage, and then you have a mic, and you have a moderator, and you got your panelists, correct? That's really what I was kind of hoping for. This was so confusing to find just because of the layout this was surrounded by the cosplay arena without really any signs let me just set the stage because i don't think i'm coming across uh, in terms of what we're visualizing here so this would be a normal kind of room ish right no it's like a picnic table area and this is where the panel was the problem is that in the back Everybody was cosplaying. Everybody was having meetings. Everybody was shouting and just having a grand old time while a panel is happening. So if you go back and watch any of my videos and you hear screaming and all that other jazz, well, yeah, that's because that was the situation. It was the most bizarre thing ever. For the McFarland panel, they kicked it off with a fan vote sort of poll, right? So you could pick from Green Lantern Jade, you could pick from The Guardian, Bizarro, or Eradicator. Now, I would like all four of these characters, if I'm being honest, and I'll tell you who basically won. I hopefully, it's not one of those things where they're really, really going to be going like, well, we're only going to make one out of these four. We need all four of these characters. That would be awesome. Now, you could probably guess who probably won, which, hey, I'm not too hard up about. I think that that's pretty cool. More on this in just a few. Kicking it off with Beetlejuice, they talked about their Movie Maniacs line. These are not my thing. It, you know, just to kind of talk about it, we're not going to be ragging on things. We're here to kind of mainly talk about DC Multiverse, you know, even the Batman the Animated Series, Superpowers, that is really my wheelhouse. These are collectibles, these are things, these are tchotchkes, these are gifts for people that, oh yeah, I heard that they like Beetlejuice. Oh, I can get them Astrid and Bob and they'll be happy, right? That, these are the types of gifts, little trinkets that you buy. For me personally, no, it doesn't do anything, but I'm not that type of collector, and there are plenty of people out there that thoroughly enjoy this type of stuff. So there is an audience for it, especially Beetlejuice, and especially making other characters besides Beetlejuice, which I ultimately found refreshing. As much as I'll go, yeah, it's not for me, it's great to see other characters, that's for sure. I am totally going to flip everything I just said because they're also making... Well, the collectible movie maniacs for Red One, which, if I'm being honest, I saw the trailer. <laughs> uh, that looks, okay, one one part of me goes, yeah, that looks like just mind-numbing fun. And then another part of me goes, they're still making movies like this. So you have Nick, you have The Rock, you have Krampus, and all the other 
just insane stuff. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if this movie is amazing, right? But part of me thinks, like, you know, even with the Jack O'Malley versus the Snowman, or better yet, a Red One four-pack featuring the Polar Bear, which is apparently named Garcia. Again, it's just not my thing, and... Well, let's say this. Hopefully the movie's good. It will, if it is good, will it sell these? And then we all know what the answer is if the movie flops. So you pick your poison, you take your choice. Yeah, that's really all I got for these. <laughs> Moving on into Spawn. Now, this was kind of interesting. This is going to be a larger resin statue. The pre-order goes up 1021 as far as the design, as far as the photos and kind of what they talked about and everything else for this resin statue, they kind of touched on when you have a flat surface and then you go, okay, you know what, I'm going to take issue number one and then I'm going to turn it into basically 3D real life. So now, what does Spawn look like from the back? What does his cape, What what is everything that it's doing to then create this image in a full geometric, you know, 3D profile. And I kind of like what they did here. It kind of has a, an eye spiral for the cape. Spawn is dead set in the middle, all the green necroplasm. It's pretty cool. I'll give it to them. I think it's pretty awesome. They did go over that their Call of Duty tactical spawn and regular spawn are starting hits. I believe it's targets. I haven't really seen any other inclination just yet. Possibly GameStop, but as of right now, yeah, I think that Target is the only one getting these so far. They're very interesting when, if I find the spawn with the cloth cape, yeah, I'll definitely grab that one. But more and more, Spawn has just become like, oh, I'm perfectly comfortable living in the days of old in the 90s with my Spawn figures. This one, though, is one that, again, if, when I find it, I would definitely grab it. I like the look of this. I like the one that came in the two-pack with Todd McFarlane. This one, though, harkens back to the original drawing before he, he kind of came up with a story that this is supposed to be on another planet and it's cold there, that's why he's blue. And then when he changed his spawn comes from hell, he goes to red. Very simplistic, right? You get the idea. Then you have a Target exclusive. This is the Page Punchers, the two little minifigures with the comic book. If spawn is your thing still, if you're still after like the comic books that are coming out, you can get this variant cover if you like. And that's kind of like the main draw that they were talking about. Again, to kind of, and it kind of makes me upset in many ways that Spawn has become what it has become on store shelves. It's no longer this like commanding toy property. It is just very much an afterthought. And from the days of me collecting Spawn and loving Spawn and then seeing what it is now, it's it's very like, ah, oh, that's just that's just a darn shame. In terms of McFarlane and Marvel, we are actually going to be getting some newer offerings. Shocking, I know. I believe the line is doing very well. They seem to be selling out everywhere. I don't really see them much, except for kind of here and there. Maybe you see one or two on the shelves. It could be different for other avenues, of course. But we are going to be getting a Jack Kirby Thor, and then the Secret Wars symbiote costume, alien costume, Spider-Man. Both of these will have cardboard backdrops, they said, so don't worry. They're actually quite cool. The more recent Captain America didn't really have that Jack Kirby face, and I'll kind of zoom in here, but this one seemingly is more on model to Jack Kirby's artwork, so I love that. I love that that looks so cool. Then you have Admit the Chaos. There comes a costume. That in and of itself is very cool. I'm interested to kind of see how they're going to do the, the Spidey Sense kind of lines right there on the top. But yeah, these are uh, two great offerings for Marvel. And across the board, they said that they can do any Marvel that they want. Then you're going to have the smaller one-tenth scale posed PVC statues, of which I have a Venom video if you want to check it out. It's pretty cool. But I can't necessarily say that I'm going to be actively going after these. 
I just admire them from afar. And I like how Spider-Man has the Hobgoblin pumpkins in his spaghetti webbing. And then you have Captain America, you have the Jim Lee Cyclops, you have Daredevil, and then you have a Todd McFarlane Storm. He kind of talked about that, that <laughs> back in the day they asked him, hey, which character do you want to draw? And he's like, oh, the one with cake or something. <laughs> I thought he said cape. I'm still not sure what he said, cake or cape, but... We have Storm, so that's McFarlane's Storm, and I would say if that Jim Lee Cyclopsy, if I see it in person, I really like the look of that. I think that the lines and the colors and everything really makes it pop with Jim Lee's artwork, so these are all coming for spring 2025. So get ready if you are after those. Next up, we're going to be talking about the McFarlane Platinum Editions. Buckle up, because we got some things to discuss here. At this point, it's it's just like, okay, they're, they're going to do what they want to do, and we'll try and figure it out as it is. There is the regular edition figures of the collector's edition, or any figure. Then you have the platinum, which could be a color change variant, like the black and white Batman. And now, now we're going to have the red platinum sticker, which signifies... Just a, it's not a variant of a character that's out. It's just a, a random figure that they've decided to make. So you have two Batmans, but then maybe you have a red platinum question. So <laughs> I hope that's making sense. And really for me, as much as I've talked about the platinums and just say, man, no more platinums. They're never going to do away with the platinums. It's just not going to happen. That's their business model. That's what they've chosen to do. On top of the new red platinum, you're going to get a gold platinum, <laughs> which, think about that. It's <laughs> This, in the way they kind of described it, this is going to be the ultra rare. Now, hopefully, this only applies to their movie maniacs or things that involve Dwayne The Rock Johnson, but essentially, and as to my understanding, you will get kind of like a little artifact piece within these Ultra Chase rares. Like, it'll be a piece of The Rock's costume from the movie. If that's what you want. <laughs> it's it's just like, you can do that for Batman. You can have a, a piece of Batman's cape, something like that. Oh, thank God. Here is the DC Multiverse. Finally, we have something to talk about. First and foremost, I'm pretty jazzed on this. Winter 2024, so really towards the end of the year, we have Orion, we got Wildcat, we got Aqualad, and then we have Superman. I'm really digging Orion. He comes with the harness. I love that we're getting Wildcat. Honestly, can't say I'm that stoked on this version of Aqualad, and I like the Superman that it's not action comics. It's like later on. It's not, like, people are thinking like it's Kingdom Come. It's more of that golden age sort of era of Superman once they kind of got in the groove of things. So I think that, that Superman looks great. Again, I think that they're using the body that has the cuffs on the costume, which let's just say, Hopefully that's not the case because, oh, FYI, in this room that we were in, the sun was behind the screen. So if you're wondering why I'm over on the side and trying to get an angle, it's because dead on, unless you were taking photos, it's just the sunbeams were ruining the picture. You also got lines in it for the screen, but, you know, it was just like the perfect storm of a mess. But somehow we came out with some imagery for this. So for that, I am very thankful and we get to actually talk about something. So to really, again, go over it, Orion looks awesome. Wildcat, I'm stoked. And then with the other two, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and then just be prepared for Platinum Editions and Red Platinum Editions, I'm sure, for each character. No, they didn't say that. But with any DC Multiverse figure now, that always seems to be the mindset. It's, okay, here's, let's say, Mr. Terrific. The regular version has the red T for the face. The Platinum Edition, of which, let me just flip the desk that I'm using right now, is gray. It's the normal Mr. Terrific, you know? Justice League Task Force. This is interesting. Now, remember the old video game? I sure do. <laughs> when they showed this, though... And it was like like 20 seconds of me being like, 
<laughs> and then it was instantly like, oh, oh no, oh no. The build a figure is dark side. For that, I'm going to say, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. So there's your dark side minus the cape and the medallion and the, the chest, of which we all knew was going to eventually come out. <laughs> I don't know. First and foremost, I don't like the body that they're using for Aquaman. They keep using it for every Aquaman. It's not a very good body type. I really wish that they would change it. Perhaps it may improve if they did some kind of decent hair sculpt. I don't know what they're doing with the head sculpts. Unless there's like a normal head portrait in that box, it looks like he's like Faye Dunaway or something like that. <laughs> it doesn't look like he's underwater because he's not. He's not, you know, it just doesn't provide that. Superman's got the mullet, but that looks all kinds of off. Flash, Batman with the whatever he's going on. I really did like that old video game when they revealed it. When they say, hey, yeah, Task Force. I was like, heck, yeah. Again, I like to build a figure dark side. I do like some of the shading or the video game kind of texturing effects that they got going on. But several of these head portraits. And I went back and really looked at the game and everything else before I did this video just to kind of double check. Yes and no. Like, it's, I would say Batman matches the most. I would say Darkseid matches the most. There are elements for, of course, Superman and Flash and Aquaman. But you kind of get the idea where it's kind of like, it's not translated exactly for me to be like, oh, that's pretty solid. But I'm curious to know what you guys think about this because I'm... You know, it keeps saying in, in in this day and age with so many things coming out, it's so important to make them spot on and make them good and make them what people want, what they're looking for. If you go, hey, this is going to be based off of this. And for me personally, in these photos, until I kind of see them in hand, yeah, this is just really not doing it. Then they also announced a 12-inch mega figure, the Red Swamp Thing. I'm going to be honest with you. This was not something I was aware of. Do I want it? Almost definitely. I think that that looks really cool, actually. Then you have a little bit of a sneak preview in the form of Batman and Robin. Now, I was really hoping for a second wave reveal. However, we're not getting a second wave reveal. Hopefully we see one in the future because we're just getting a Batmobile. And keep in mind, the Batman figure is not included, which kind of raises a question. Unless you got that Batman multi-pack, you don't have a cloth goods cape with your George Clooney Batman. The one they just released in the Build-A-Figure series has a plastic cape. Hopefully it fits because in really looking at this thing up close, it's quite cool. Now, I think a lot of people were kind of saying, wait, it's Batman and Robin. Isn't it a two-seater? It was never a two-seater. It didn't even have a top to it. It was a toy commercial. Remember, that movie was nothing but a toy commercial. It does light up. It has the sound effects. It's pretty darn cool. I got to play with it. I got to pick it up. It roughly feels like the Batman 89 Batmobile. So I think that if you're a fan of this, you'll definitely dig it. In terms of Joker, they just basically had an update that, yes, it's coming, you get Murray Franklin, you get Joaquin Phoenix, and probably they better sell it soon because Joker 2 didn't do anyone any favors. I myself didn't see it, I can't say, oh, this or that, but it's just the general, seemingly audience reception to that sequel. So, winter 2024 is coming. It does say 17 plus, perhaps, just perhaps, it may include a weapon of some sorts. I honestly do not know. They weren't really available to talk about this, so we will know more details later as it comes about. But when it usually says things like that, it's for an older audience. Now, if you want to say, well, the Joker movie is rated R, that's maybe why. So it's kind of up in the air, but I would hope that they would add the appropriate weapon. Then they unveiled... <laughs> These were on display before I knew what they were, so I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, I'm sure we'll find out about Todd's mods. These are very different. I kind of see the market that they're trying to tap into, vinyl figures, 
if you think about DC Multiverse, it very much has that Funko element to it of pop rare chases and this or that or exclusives to ad nauseum, let's be honest. This uh, apparently is a kind of like a what if situation where Todd McFarlane would draw doodles on various things, napkins around the office, and then people thought, oh, you know, we could potentially make these into vinyl figures. <laughs> These are supposedly just going to be Batman related for now. And I say that knowing that they'll probably do other characters eventually. Bane. And he looks good. These are very teeny tiny, by the way. They're around, I want to say, maybe around four or five inches tall. They're seemingly very tiny. Swamp Thing is very teeny tiny. Batman, you can see him in the Todd Mods box. They're basically like super deformed characters of characters we already know and love the sneak preview coming up i think is is very interesting and i want to say that maybe not as well executed as when they kind of announced i was like oh what's this going to look like and they did have the godzilla on display now this is roughly going to be the size of a Mega figure, we'll say maybe a little bit better. It comes with a Page Puncher's Batman. It comes with King Kong, of which you clearly see. And then it comes with a Hush 7-inch Batman. So you get this Batman, which you can help me out. Does this have a new head portrait? I don't have mine handy available, obviously. But let me know. It looks different, but it might be the same or one that we have seen before. But you get the idea. Small Batman, big Batman, so you can have both. And then he's going to be fighting kind of, sort of, a large King Kong, I guess. <laughs> but again, I'm curious to know what you guys think. And I've heard mixed things on it. And to be honest with you, I feel like if I have a King Kong and I have a Batman, then I really already have this. It kind of looks like a King Kong I already have. Then we got a good look at Geoforce, of which he will be a Target exclusive he should be kind of available slash going up for pre-order any day, they said. They mentioned it with these figures right here. He has swappable faceplates, of which we've been seeing a lot with multiple figures, including the ones that you see on the screen. There's that Mr. Terrific. Still, I made that video, and I go, you know, wouldn't it be funny if the Platinum is the regular standard-looking gray on the T on the face of Mr. Terrific? And lo and behold, yes, that will be... The Platinum. I am excited to get Geoforce, though. I think that that's, that's a cool figure. I'm glad that they're making him. More on that in just a few. Hopefully, we'll find out some more key details about when we can grab that one. Now, admittedly, while I like Geoforce, I really like that we're getting more of a classic Captain Cold. I really love that we're getting Power Girl, and then we're also getting... Guy Gardner. So across the board, hands down, this was my favorite slide of the day. We're also getting streaky, so we got some more DC super animals. <laughs> That's pretty rad. You're also going to get a second chance at the Thomas Wayne Batman from Flashpoint, along with Eobard Thawne, the yellow Flash. Oh, and yes, Thomas Wayne has the unmasked head portrait, as does Eobard Thrawn. And Thomas has his guns again. So you should be stoked if you missed out or if you sold yours, just FYI. Now, there's also going to be Platinum Edition versions of the Joker and Earth 2 Robin in the form of the Speed Force Flash and a black-suited Joker. The Speed Force Flash, as you can see, is kind of dissolving away. I think that's kind of interesting. They're also going to be doing a 12-inch tall Joker statue. That's about as classic a Joker as I could imagine. That's very fitting with the figure that we just saw with this whole McFarlane digital. These are real things. These are tangible things. I really despise the fact that I have to say that every time because people are so thoroughly confused. Because when you say digital, people instantly think, they go, wait, is this like, is this like a fake thing? Is it only on my phone, my computer, something like that? Now, in terms of McFarlane Toys and DC Direct, they briefly went over some Batman the Animated Series. This is a Target Store exclusive line. They talked about the Maxi Zeus Wave that is hitting stores now. I haven't seen them myself, but I've seen plenty of other people find them. 
the bat plane is also coming back that was on pre-order that's not just out just yet just keep in mind the bruce wayne build a figure wave that was revealed at this past year's WonderCon has just been pushed to spring 2025 so most likely you will see this towards the tail end of january into february somewhere around then but for now, Maxi Zeus and the Bruce Wayne wave have basically just swip swap places. And then I see Bane's belt, and I feel like it's clearly missing some paint. Just FYI, the new Batman adventures, of which we just spoke about, they did say that these are starting to hit store shelves now. I haven't seen any instance of that, but I will be actively going after these. I think they look really good. Then they kind of talked about the cowls. These are those cowl statue prop replicas. They are the one-third scale. No, you can't wear them. No, they're not for your action figures. A lot of explaining with McFarlane toys, but by their own volition, though. This is things that they have done to make people think certain things, but they unveiled the Batman Begins cowl. You have the Detective Comics, and then you also have the Hush cowl. So all of these will be coming out... They say around winter 2024, so look for them if you are after them. If you have picked up, let's say, any of the more recent cows, the first wave, Batman the Animated Series, or otherwise, they are not my thing, but I'm curious to know what you guys think about them. How do they feel? Is it something you would recommend? That's just something that I'm very curious about. They do look cool, but again, it's not going to be something that I want on my shelf, in all honesty. It's like, to me, it's like one of those Todd's mods. It's just not something that I need. They also went over superpowers, of which it's very exciting because they revealed an entire upcoming wave for spring 2025 in the form of Lobo, Jason Todd Robin, you have the Atom, the Flash, Jay Garrick, you have an unmasked Batman, and then you have Superman in his black Return of Superman, Death of Superman costume. I honestly think that's a solid wave. Although, I will tell you, Lobo looks very Superman, the animated series slash Justice League. I just wish that they went with more of a different design, if anything. It's very much Superman, the animated series to me. And then they briefly went over some upcoming resin statues. So you got Catwoman and Batman, if statues be your thing. You can pre-order these now, then they talked about the Supergirl statue, of which seems to be making a lot of waves. I've seen a lot of comments about this. It must be the short shorts. Is it the short shorts? Must be. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and then to kind of wrap things up, because I didn't want to leave it out, because I know someone out there would want to know about the McFarlane sports figures. They have a few on pre-order, seven-inch posed figures. Again, if this is your thing, you can definitely grab them. And I am curious too, if you are a collector of McFarlane's sports figures, how are they? Do you recommend them to people? Do you have them set up on your shelf? Do you keep them in box? I'm just very curious on that side of the avenue because for me, it's just, it's all gibberish to me. When you say, oh yeah, look at this guy. I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. That's what that is, isn't it? And then we have the same thing with the UFC figures, of which you got to think, if they keep coming out with these things, then people are definitely going after them. So 7-inch posed figures, you can pre-order these now. You got likes of Conor McGregor and all the other ones. <laughs> and there they are doing their kicks and holding their belts. They're also going to be doing figures for the Lord of the Rings, the War of the Rohirrim. <laughs> Way to make that easy to say, Lord of the Rings, people. This is an animated series that is coming out very soon. They are doing 3.7-inch figures with a Build-A-Figure that is also 3.75-inch. Again, not something for me. I have talked with a lot of people who have brought these up. And they're very much looking forward to them. So again, it's not always about just the things you like. There's something for everyone. And they did mention that the boxes can transform and you can construct this giant Hell's Deep part of the castle, which again, it's all cardboard. But if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, wouldn't that be cool to you? I mean, I would love to see someone just construct it and see if it 
ends up looking as good as this looks. Keep in mind, it is cardboard. And then to kind of round things out, we're going to be getting the Berserker figure line. These are two different figures, both of which I believe are Keanu Reeves. I can't tell you really anything about this new property, but they look to have a lot of interswappable weapons, a head portrait or two, something like that. And if you didn't guess it, if you want a drum roll, the winner of the poll contest that they did before the panel started was, of course, Green Lantern Jade. So they did say that sometime in 2025, Jade will be coming. But again, I hope that we're getting like a, a normal looking Bizarro, a normal looking Eradicator, and I want the Guardian. That'd be awesome. Along with Dublix. Come on. Come on, McFarlane Toys. That's what I want to see. So to really quick wrap up everything, that was that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all the support this entire New York Comic Con weekend. We still have more to talk about. I'll have more photos. I got more companies to show off their booths and yada yada. So stay tuned. There's a lot more coming. Oh, and don't forget to enter the contest if you'd like. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.